G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I've got a quick video, um, as mentioned in the title down there, about improved cases, compressed loads, and some other little details. Um, what I'm talking about is the basics of loading and some of the things for largely for the beginners and for the people who are just getting into it, um, and maybe a little bit of information for some of the people that are a little bit more experienced. Um, to start off with, um, I am talking about loading. I've done a little bit in the way of information videos about what I do loading wise. I haven't done too much because um, I suppose I'm a little bit different to the average on what I do there. I don't do any ladder testing and I don't try and find the nodes for, for powder development and that sort of thing or load development in the way of powder. Um, I'll quickly explain that a little bit more. Um, the, the, the logic, one of the very sound logics that a lot of the a lot of loaders go to in the way of doing your um, your ladder testing, so testing different precise powder weights and finding out where your gun shoots best. Um, there is a couple of different logics that you do in there. One is just finding where the harmonics through the whole rifle and for you work best in that spot. Another one, which is actually talking about the actual speeds of the bullet traveling to try and line up to where the vibration at the muzzle is at its least to where the bullet passes through. So it's a very specific speed and there are different nodes. Um, briefly, vibration bouncing up and down the barrel very, very quickly. And we're trying to line up to where the bullet is scooting out just where the vibration is at its least. Um, I understand the logic. I see a few negatives attached to that side of things. Um, one is different temperatures, different um, molecule structures through different temperature and steel in theory is going to vary that side of things. Um, also, you've got um, different conditions affect the burn rate on the powder, um, less so with more temperature stable powders, but different batches of powder, um, different cases, different uh, uh, wear in the barrel, all these things can change. So if you really are chasing a specific node and a, an exact 0 0.6, 0 0.1, point whatever it is, grains of powder, um, then that should be something that is actually constantly developing as time goes by. And you'd be at least going back to a powder, to ladder testing every season, if not every, every batch of powder and all that sort of stuff. So, and yes, powder does change. It's largely the same. The better brands are more consistent, but it is still something that is produced and it's still something that has uh, subtle, sometimes more than subtle, differences in different batches over different years, and, and we've certainly seen differences as things go. Anyway, all that said, I don't do um, ladder testing, so I'm a little different there, um, and for that reason, I don't get too much into it. My main development is in case preparation, um, neck tension, and, and basically going with good brass and all that sort of stuff. But the things I wanted to talk about in particular was one that was, um, I suppose I'll start with the chase that some people have for FPS. So they want the faster load. The faster will be more accurate and push all sorts of boundaries to get it to going fast. It's a little bit like guys with cars and horsepower. Horsepower is king, more horsepower is better. Well, just like guys with cars, horsepower isn't the only ingredient um, and it can be used for sure, but in a lot of cases, the fastest is not the guy with the biggest horsepower. It's not the guy producing the most horsepower. It's the best combination that works. And it's actually the same with our, with our shooting. Faster, in theory, is going to get through the wind better. So that means there's less movement from the wind and a flatter trajectory and all that sort of stuff works better. But there's almost always quite a big trade-off. Um, to start off with, you've got more kick happening. So there's more movement in the rifle the bigger deals run into, the higher up you go, the less stability you'll tend to find in your powder. Once you're pushing your boundaries, then you'll find that there's less stability. So your extreme spread, your, your speed can change. But even if that is fairly stable, like I said, there's more whack going in, in the rifle and you'll tend to find it is then less accurate to shoot than just running a little bit down from that. The things I tend to find is that once you're up in a real top end side of things, you might it might be good for a little bit, but the next time out you're shooting, there's a little bit more temperature. There becomes a little bit more consistency into it. So my call, I certainly try and push for up in the top end. I'm running heavier bullets and I'm up in the top end of things, but I tend to find 
a little bit once again the same as horsepower I'll find out where that is and I'll come back a little bit and that's where I see the best consistency and I tend to find the best overall performance so that's FPS and 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 basically saying that it's not everything coming down a little bit can work um, and I suppose I'll finish that with some guys will go down the other end of the scale they're running right down lower because they find it groups better that isn't really um, where I would recommend going. That is really more about making the rifle shoot softer. Um, and it probably means you're shooting a caliber above where you want to be, or sorry, I should say a cartridge above where you want to be. And maybe there's a step down would suit what you're doing and what you want a rifle to perform like. Okay, so that's that. Now I want to talk about another way which is about gaining more feet per second, um, but or more speed out of the same essential cartridge. Um, but by doing it by keeping your efficiencies. Um, same thing as applies, you can obviously go further, further, but what I'm talking about is improved cases and a little bit of the logic to go with an improved case. In front, I have um, my Gibbs case, which is a Shytac improved um, versus the standard Shytac case. And you can see there in the basics of what that is, it's, it's different um, in the very simple concept of, of improved cases is you're making more room for more powder. That's the simple bit of it. But what I wanted to do today was explain a little bit for people to make sense of it. Because why would you go through the pain of getting an improved case um, for a little bit more speed? Well, there's actually a lot more than that generally going on with improved case. Yes, of course, you could use the standard case, change your caliber on that sort of stuff. But there's a couple of things that you should keep in mind with factory cases. Not all of them are perfect designs to start off with. Yes, it's a design that's worked and no doubt it's done years and years and years, but you'll tend to find when you do some research, there's some issues that are going on with them. Um, and that the improving them is not just about making more powder room, it is about improving them. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's go some, through some fundamentals. To start off with, the most common thing you can see, as you can see here, is the shoulders being pushed from a 15 degree shoulder or a 20 degree shoulder, I've forgotten what the measurements is on a Shytac, out to a 40 degree shoulder, so it's been moved up flat. The other thing you'll tend to notice in an improved case is it's not just flat, is that the, it's gone from where they're fairly smooth shoulder corners, going from the, from the case walls to the shoulder, they're, they're fairly smooth curves to there, and it's a fairly smooth case uh, curve back to the neck as well. Now there are places where if you think about it um, in, uh, in natural fluid dynamics and flow of things that going around a smooth corner, so smooth bends, will mean that the gases will push out smoother as it goes around those corners. Um, the truth of it is that isn't really the case. Uh, but what is the case is your brass flow. Yes, your brass flow. So what we're actually talking about there is that the brass, when it gets squeezed really hard by the explosion that's going on there, and whether that's 40,000 PSI or it's 50,000 PSI or it's 60,000 PSI or it's above, there's a lot of PSI. There's a lot of pressure forcing on that brass. What that means is that brass then gets squeezed um, and it becomes like plasticine or like a fluid where it is moving to where it can go. It can't go out through the sides of the chamber. It can't go out through the bolt. So any place that brass can go is out the same places where the bullet's going. So if you have smooth, a smooth shape, it's easier for that brass to flow up and around and push out. If you put sharp corners on there, then you find that the logic in that is that the brass stops. It doesn't push as much because it jams against the shoulder. And then you've got this face that's coming across the top here, which is your 40 degree. There's 45 degrees, there's 40 degrees, there's 30 degrees. Once you push your shoulder like this, there's a lot more force just coming up here, not squeezing it out here. It's more pushing against the shoulder. Now, does that limit the gas flow? Does that limit the explosion, that side of things? Not in any sense that, that, that has been proven, but, and, and, it's, and, and I suppose that's a little bit, I can come back to the car world as well. When you've got slower flow and more like fluid, then yes, there is a, there is the corners thing does cause restriction, so the less corners, the better. 
But when you've got just lots of pressure, like in supercharging and turbocharging, I think lots of pressure without too much flow, then the corners and the different shapes and things don't tend to matter as much because you've got pressure pushing from everywhere. So it'll go to where it can, and it's not that influenced by the shape of things. Not completely irrelevant, but not as relevant. So that's the first thing you're doing. That's the first thing you're looking at in, in the shape of that, that shoulder structure and the shape of improving the case, you're obviously allowing more room to let more powder in. Um, so you've got more room in that side of things, but you're also stopping, to a degree, stopping shoulder wear, or sorry, the brass growth. So you get more life out of your case because not as much of it is squeezing out each time you shoot it. Um, there is also some logic which is semi-proven not really but when you've got a very narrow shoulder and you you can essentially imagine your gases that are coming out of here they tend to be pushing up to where they can go and get more throat erosion there's more gas coming from the side that can go over and run up the throat of your barrel when you've sharpened up your shoulders like this, so you just have your, you know, your basically your neck, and then you come down to where you get your shoulders, that flow, that, that shoulder that's running off here, blasts into the case and straightens itself out. So rather, there is, I should say with that, one of the logics that's involved with it is you're trying to avoid a bit of your throat erosion by only letting the straightforward gas come out rather than the stuff that's coming and ramping off your shoulders. Not really proven, but uh, in some cases, people have said that have found that they've got less throat erosion, even though they're running more um, pressure and more. No, I shouldn't say more pressure. They're running more um, powder and getting more speed without the extra um, throat erosion to go with it. Um, and I would qualify all the way through this sort of stuff. This works in some cases, not in other cases. Not something that anyone's got a camera down to the sizes where they can see exactly what's going in the side of this sort of thing to see it all. It's done much more in a trial and error fashion, in a, in a test, do the case, wear them out, that sort of stuff. So it's more um, evidence from afterwards than actually being able to see this sort of stuff at the speeds and things we're talking about. But this is some of the logic that goes with it. Okay, so that's that. That the the other thing that is that we're also looking at in a improved case, um, and it's probably one of the important ingredients to keep in mind. When you start to run higher pressures and deal with more of an explosion and 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 more um, power, more horsepower in your chamber you start to find the issues that brass causes. And what I'm really talking about there is the likes of a tight bolt lift, is the likes of brass wear, brass life and that side of things. And that comes into other things as well. There's how nicely the chamber is finished, so a good gunsmith, good reams and things like that can make a difference because a little bit of a rough patch, a little bit of a, a score line and things like that are stuff that can then make that brass hang up once it's expanded out and shrunk back, um, if it hasn't got enough shrink back and there is some bad marks inside there, you can find the brass doesn't want to come out. So a little bit of the quality of machining and the, the tooling and the, and the methods they use, um, flush through systems and stuff like that to get all the chips out to make sure it's the nicest chamber they can, that can be relevant. A little bit of the finish of the chamber can be relevant. It's relevant as to how much the brass is gripped. If the brass is completely slippery inside there, has no way of tractioning onto the side of it, it's got nothing to help it apart from the physical shape. It's got nothing to help that growth or to stop that growth. So the right amount of texture, it's very hard for you to see, but there is actually a little bit of texture inside the chamber so the brass can grip to it, which once again helps with the growth. But also the angles. The case angles, whether they, how much they're angled from top to bottom, there will generally be a slight angle. And that's for the same reason. If you have it dead straight and it goes bang and it expands to where it's gripping, then the brass doesn't come out. If you have a slight angle, then you have a little bit of an advantage to the fact that when it shrinks back that tiny bit, it's free from that. Also, the length of those shoulders on the front there, if you've got a point where they've got immediate shrink back and they've got gap versus a lesser angle where a little bit of shrink back doesn't really do anything, it's still gripping, are all things that can let the chamber, 
or let the, the cartridge run more power when it's in that place. So I listen, that's probably getting a little bit complicated to try and explain. What I'm really coming back to is that in doing the, the, the likes of an improved case can actually help. It's not um, always going to be a big improvement. It is about trying to see a little bit more out of that cartridge. In some cases, it's trying to improve problems that are there. And yes, for sure, if you just back your powder off and run the lower speed and just use it where it's in its happy place, more of a hunting around that sort of stuff and not trying to push things, then yeah, what is the point of an uh, improved case? If on the other hand you are trying to run a bit more, you're doing what we do sort of do in the ELR stuff, we're running heavy bullets, we'd like a little bit more speed, um, then it can really work. Um, I've been in the place, even in an unimproved case, um, by slightly improving the chamber, and I'm not really talking about improving the chamber, I'm talking about just throating the barrel out so that pushes the lands a little bit further forward so I can push my bullet out a little bit, which then lets me run a tiny bit more powder um, and gets that all to a happy sweet spot just by simply letting it all operate much more in its comfort zone. Um, all that said, um, oh well I should say, that moves into the last bit I wanted to talk about for today and that was compressed loads. Um, there's Most people understand what that's talking about, uh, that, that's simply a compressed load simply means that when you put that amount of powder in your cartridge or in your brass, and you go to put your bullet in, it starts to squeeze on the powder. Um, and some people look at that as that's a bad thing. So you're going to create a lot more pressure and, and that's a bad thing. You don't want to go to compressed because that's got warning bells on it. Um, and I suppose what I would say is that it really depends on the powder you're using um, and you should never, ever just fill a case up, jam a bullet and shoot it um, because that's how yeah, terrible things happen. But with the right testing and you're in the right place and you know you are and you're just trying to run a little bit more because your pressures aren't too high and you are then getting to where you can feel a tiny bit of pressure or you can hear your brass, you can hear the powder crunching or you can just feel a little tiny bit or just on the, the, the charts it tells you it's compressed. That isn't something to be too concerned about. The, it doesn't run more pressure because it is compressed. It runs more pressure because you've got more powder, and like I said, you should be very aware you're going, but there's nothing wrong with the compression. As long as you're not getting to the point where you're forcing the bullet down in, if you can just feel it and your pressures are fine, it's fine. And to be truthful, in my way of looking at things, it's a lot better to run a little bit compressed, knowing that your powder is all in exactly the same, it's all squished in, versus you know some of the pistol cartridges and things like that, where you've only got half a case of powder um, and, the, and the powder could be laying anywhere around inside there so there's um, like I said a lot better in a compressed compressed form and I much prefer to be loading something out of the way you know you can't as I'm no doubt everyone who knows about handgun cartridges and has been there where there's the odd double load because it can fit twice the load in there if you're not paying attention then it can go bang very heavily because there's more room in there um, Another conversation really, but the compressed load side of things, like I said, don't just do it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't cause anything wrong to go to the edge of compression. It doesn't cause more pressure. Um, it's just about the fact that there's only just room in there. And like I just previously said, there's places where I've got to that place, still didn't have the pressure, actually throated the, the rifling forward a little bit to let the bullet out a little bit further, to let that tiny bit more powder in there to get everything to work, to get my pressures working without any issues whatsoever. That particular last one I was talking about, the 3006 running the heavy 230 grain projectile. But um, like I said, all, all about testing, always step into it, lightly step it in and be conservative on your powder loads and that sort of stuff and build up on it. Um, the main thing I would come back to is the likes of running to the ragged edge to get that more speed to be the guy with the faster thing or to read a number on the internet and try and get to that number. Listen, if it's to, to be completely honest, even if it's a whole hundred feet per second away from that, it doesn't matter. The rifle's still going to perform well, it's still going to shoot well, you're going to run a tiny bit more MOA, but it's not going to be the difference in things. The difference is in getting that more consistent speed, that more consistent shot, that 
that tighter MOA, um, and that will work a lot more than trying to chase that last little bit of speed. Anyway, guys, that's what I got to share today. I um, hope that of some help to people. Um, leave any comments below and catch you next time. Hi everybody, Sam here. Today I wanted to bring you a new item that we're putting on our web store and that is the coffee cup, which is actually a lot more than a coffee cup. It is support. These will be $30, they cost us 10. So anyone who purchases one of these will be giving us $20 support and that's very much appreciated. We put a lot of time, effort and money into doing what we do, so the support would really help. To all those who do support us, subscribers, people who follow us on YouTube and Facebook, people who purchase our products and support bits, thank you very much, it is very much appreciated. These will now be on our store and there will be a link below the video to check them out. Thanks for watching, see you next time.